Welcome to Fun Islamic Facts, where I share fun facts about Muhammad and the Quran whenever jihadis go on a killing spree. In Volume 4 of Sahih al-Bukhari, Muhammad's companion Abu Qatada lists Allah's reasons for creating the stars. Abu Qatada mentioning Allah's statement, And indeed we have adorned the nearest heaven with lamps, Surah 67, verse 5 of the Quran, said, The creation of these stars is for three purposes, and they are, one, as decoration of the nearest heaven, two, as missiles to hit the devils, and three, as signs to guide travelers. So, if anybody tries to find a different interpretation, he is mistaken and just wastes his efforts and troubles himself with what is beyond his limited knowledge. Now, why would Abu Qatada think that stars are missiles for attacking devils? Let's consult the Quran to find out. In Surah 67, verse 5, Allah declares, And indeed we have adorned the nearest heaven with lamps, and we have made such lamps as missiles to drive away the shayateen, devils, and have prepared for them the torment of the blazing fire. So, Allah created lamps in the nearest heaven, and He uses these lamps as missiles to drive away devils. We know from other Quran passages that the lamps Allah refers to are stars. For instance, in Surah 37, verses 6 through 10, Allah states, Verily we have adorned the near heaven with the stars for beauty, and to guard against every rebellious devil. They cannot listen to the higher group, angels, for they are pelted from every side. Outcast, and theirs is a constant or painful torment, except such as snatch away something by stealing, and they are pursued by a flaming fire of piercing brightness. The devils try to hear the secret plans of Allah as the angels discuss them, so Allah hurls a star at them. When Allah says that, demons are pursued by a flaming fire of piercing brightness, he's referring to a shooting star. Muhammad explains this in Sahih Muslim number 5819. It was narrated that Abdullah ibn Abbas said, One of the companions of the Messenger of Allah, an Ansari man, told me that while they were sitting one night with the Messenger of Allah, a shooting star shone brightly. The Messenger of Allah said to them, what did you used to say during the Jahiliyyah, i.e. the pre-Islamic period of ignorance, if you saw a shooting star? They said, Allah and his messenger know best. We used to say that a great man has been born this night, or that a great man has died. The messenger of Allah said, It, i.e. the shooting star, does not appear for the death or life of anyone. But when our Lord, exalted and blessed is his name, decrees some matter, the bearers of the throne glorify him. Then the inhabitants of heaven who are closest to them glorify him, until the tasbih, statements of glorification, reach the people of the lowest heaven. Then those who are nearest to the bearers of the throne say, What did your Lord say? And they tell them what he said. And the inhabitants of heaven ask one another for the news, until the news reaches the lowest heaven. Then the eavesdropping jinn snatch what they can and convey it to their friend, the soothsayers. What they narrated as they heard it is true, but they add lies to it. So, stars are missiles that Allah uses to shoot demons for listening to his plans, and when we see a shooting star, it's because Allah has caught another demonic eavesdropper. This means, of course, that shooting stars aren't pieces of rock that have entered the Earth's atmosphere, as science tells us. Shooting stars are actual stars. All praise be to Allah for once again thoroughly contradicting science, reason, and reality.